Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, today's going to be quite a short one. I'm now getting quite excited about my uh, new 60 watt tube that should be arriving in a few days time. And in preparation for its arrival I decided I would make uh, the extension box that's needed because my tube is going to grow from about 800 mil out to 1200 mil and the machine is probably only about a thousand millimeters wide so I've decided to go for something like 350 millimeter extension tube. Now normally you'd make this out of possibly I've seen people making them out of plywood if you buy a proper one it'll be made from metal I've got copious supplies of acrylic as you have probably seen in the background I'm not going to go through all the details I mean there are, there are another couple of drawings that go with this as well um, but I'm going to just go straight to the machine and we'll take a quick look at cutting and then we'll get on to building the thing. Well they all cut and fell out very nicely. Well with the previous pieces uh, I wanted everything to drop. Now I'm going to cut two large pieces next or they're one piece out of each sheet and I don't want the pieces to drop this time so what I'm going to do is put some support pins, just a few support pins in the middle here just to hold it up while it's cutting and I don't want it to go off balance either so I shall just put two rows of pins in so that it remains stable. Now I'm cutting this at about four millimeters a second it's quite slow but I don't want any risk of it not cutting so if you watch that the pieces are just blowing out. It's a bit ironic really because I'm using this dodgy old tube that I've got in here um, to cut an extension box for the new tube. It's a bit cruel really because it's almost like making this poor old tube make its own coffin. As you noticed I set the pins up beforehand on my pin bed here so as to support both the outside of the job and the job itself. So now hopefully when it comes to do the last little bit of the cut nothing will drop it will all sit nice and level. There you go. No strain on that at all, just a little teeny weeny bit of load, just the merest amount of sag on that piece of material. Okay now here we've got all the pieces that make up the body of the case. Um, I've yet to design the lid but that's not a big issue because I just want to make sure that everything else fits together first. Now before I started this job I made a little test piece which looks like this that's got a tongue and a slot in it. This material is five millimeter cast acrylic. Now one of the problems you have with cast acrylic is that across an eight by four sheet you get a huge variation in thickness. You buy it as a five millimeter sheet but it could be 5.5 in one place and 4.5 in another. So you really don't know what you're going to finish up with when you, I mean I've got a lovely perfect fit here, look these pieces just don't come apart and that's purely by going size to size on my drawing. I didn't make any adjustments or any kerf adjustments or sew adjustments as they call them. Um, so we're going to put this together and I suspect that one or two places I can already see that the material is thinner than I'm expecting and I suspect that some of these holes which are the correct size will be too big for this material but it's not a problem because it'll all just hang together and then I'll just put a little bit of glue on it and it'll just be rock solid to push together oh, that one that one has to push that, that's good and then that one fits in there and I made this in two pieces purposely just so that it was efficient for sheet usage and this piece here which is, has got some holes in it for taking these hinges. So what I've done, I've made sure that I've got a double thickness here with these holes in so that they're strong to take the weight of the lid. It's a perfect fit. And then this piece here drops in the end here because I don't want to put, when I clamp this up onto the framework of the machine, I don't want to put strain on these holes. So it's got a filler panel in there, so that it's got a double thickness. So what I'm now going to do is to uh, fill up my little squeezy bottle here with this cement. 
Now, as you can see, I've only got a very small amount in there, but that's probably enough to do the whole of the job. You may well ask why I've made it a white perspex. It's what I had. I've got quite a bit of it that I was given by a good colleague of mine. Right, now, the way that we're going to do this is we're actually not going to put this runny stuff into the joints where the holes are. What we're trying to do is to put it between the joints. It will actually, if I push this down, it will actually, by a capillary action, it'll run underneath. Turn it upside down and suck in the air. And then I can squeeze it and run it along the joint. But I will now have to sit here for about two minutes and hold this joint together with pressure on it. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with all this gluing, so we shall, uh, we shall reconvene uh, when it's all stuck together. So now I've made the lid for this extension box. Um, all that remains to be done basically is to fix it in place with a couple of hinges. Um, I'm going to use a M4 camp sunk screw, but I'm going to tap the holes. <laughs> It's a very nice box and I'm thinking that probably I'll fit it on upside down that way it will naturally fall open and I shall have to then just do nothing more and probably put a couple of pins in it like that to stop it coming open. Well as usual when I've done something like this um, if you think that this could be useful to you and you don't want to go to all the trouble of designing it, but you want to adapt this design to suit your machine requirements, uh, you're welcome to the DXF files. All you've got to do is just message me with your email address and um, I'll send you a copy. Well, all I've got to do now is patiently await for the arrival of my new tube, which should be here in three or four days time. <laughs>